Hey everyone, it's Jordan here. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here today, mostly because, and I do not say this lightly, we are going to get lit. Our LEDs, that is. Okay, come on, I know that's a nerdy joke, but this was so much fun. Um, today, I'm gonna show you how I got this little tree here from Amazon. Guys, it did not come like this. I had to solder all of the parts on put it together, screw it all in, and then I got it to light up. So if you wanna see how I did that and maybe buy a kit of your own and practice soldering, maybe you're a beginner like me, or maybe you're experienced and you just wanna show off your skills, this kit is very fun and it's gonna be great to do that with. So stay tuned, I'll show you how I got lit. <laughs> first thing first, get these components on the table and get them sorted. We have lots of LEDs. As you see, I'm making that pile at the top, some transistors, aluminum electrolytic capacitors, some resistors over there on the bottom left corner, our power switch and our USB port where we're going to be getting our power and the ability to turn it on and off. These little screws on the bottom, I got those on first just because, you know, I like to start. First, we have these 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. The instructions weren't super clear. They had some pictures here and there, but for the most part, I had to look it up, see where they go. If you guys need some help, just let me know. I think that these ones were the odd numbered resistors, minus seven. Seven was the... Um, same as the even numbers. So I got all three of these on and I learned a really helpful technique, which was instead of just pushing it through and trying to tack it, I would twist the capacitor leads. That way it would hold itself in place. This really helped to make my capacitors look a lot prettier and more uniform on the front. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit better at soldering. I'm just having a blast with it and now cutting off the leads. There we go. All right, now for the 100 ohm resistors. So there are two Christmas tree parts of these boards. I'm just gonna do one board because the other board was strikingly similar. Uh, it was a little bit different, but I didn't wanna bore you guys to death with a super long video. So I'm just gonna do all the components once on this one board and do the other one off camera. But here we go. I am soldering on the rest of the resistors. Something I've really liked to use is the flux or soldering paste. It just is really helpful because if you put it on your joints, it gives me a better idea of how long I want to heat up my joint with my soldering pen before I want to touch my solder to it because it will melt away. Next, I have the transistors. The transistors were a little bit harder to get them even just because they have the three prongs and I was kind of afraid to break them. Luckily, they were pretty sturdy. So I pushed them through, got them on and lubed up the joints and then I started soldering. These ones, I was a little bit nervous about the extra flow over into the joints next to them, but it wasn't really that big of a deal. It held on well. They weren't all super pretty, but you know what? I am so proud of how much better I've gotten by just practicing a few times. Guys, if I can do this, then you absolutely can too. So there you have it. I'm going to clip those off and get on to the next part. What do we have next? Flip it on over and throw in some capacitors. These capacitors were cool. They're just a little aluminum electrolytic, 16 volt, 47 microfarads. Uh, nothing too crazy. They pack a little punch, but you know, you got to have capacitors on your board. I had fun getting these tacked on as well. Just look at the way that that solder is just flowing and creating beautiful joints. That's honestly the best part. You know, at a certain point, I would say my only complaint was that my ventilation was not amazing and it gave me a bit of a cough afterwards. So make sure you get good ventilation. Always clip off your joints. I mean, you know, whatever. If you want to keep your leads, keep them. But I don't like that. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay, so this is the part where it starts to get so pretty. We have our RGB LEDs. So at first I was curious because I thought to myself, in the picture I see a lot of colors, but like, how is this going to know which is which? They all seem the same. But luckily they 
are the RGBs, so it could be any of the colors. So I put them all in, there was a bunch of them. Make sure you know that your long lead is your positive and your short is your negative. There's a tiny little marking on the board saying what's positive and what's negative, but it's just good to know that your long lead is the positive. Polarity matters in this instance. So here we go. We are getting into these joints, soldering them all on. I thought this part was so satisfying because to me, it's kind of annoying when you're going back and forth, flipping the board and then soldering and then flipping and soldering because it's just like, it's fine in practice, but when you're recording, it can honestly be such a pain. So this part was super satisfying at getting to just solder everything and keep my camera mostly in place. Um, so yeah, here we go getting them on and I just felt like it was flowing. I felt like an absolute pro. I'm like, wow, look at these gorgeous beads and I'm just here soldering like I know what I'm doing because guys, apparently it only takes a couple times practicing to feel like you know what you're doing. I'm not saying it's perfect. See, look at me. I can't even hold my camera steady. I'm just saying that practice, it does make a difference. That being said, I have gone through so much solder and I'm going to need some more soon because look at this. These joints are just absolutely draining me so quickly. All right. So we just about got all of our LEDs on this board. Yay. You know, we could just snip them off. This part is so satisfying. It's also very easy. Just cut them all off. I kept poking myself with the little leads on the other side. It's driving me crazy. So here we go. We got our power switch, which I pushed on in the beginning of the video and our USB socket. These were pretty easy because they actually held themselves in place. Unlike most through hole components, which I feel like are always falling off. And I did find the hack for that for the other ones, but for these, it was nice because they were really firmly in place. And all I had to do was tack some solder on them. Look at that. Easy peasy guys. Sometimes you just have to give yourself the easy victories to get that confidence boost and keep on going. Um, I was a little bit nervous that if I didn't do these absolutely perfect, that the power switch wouldn't work and it wouldn't be grounded or the USB socket wouldn't work. But guys, no need to fear because everything turned out just fine. This was annoying though, because I don't know if they expected me to put everything together and then solder because when I went to put things on, the LEDs were bumping into each other. This part was also annoying. It was so hard to get it on the stand. But once I did, it was fine. I just had to twist a little LED here and there and then shove it onto the board. Ooh, we are getting so close to the end. I cannot wait to show you the final results. I was so excited when I plugged it in. And if you're on my LinkedIn page, then I had you guess whether or not it worked the first time. And as you're gonna see, not that you know if this is the first time or not, but it did, it absolutely did. And here you go, the final reveal. Isn't it gorgeous? I wish you could see it without so much flash, but I don't really have too much control over that. I had so much fun with this. Honestly, this has been the best project yet. It was really rewarding because you got to see all the pretty lights at the end. It was awesome. So you obviously see what I mean by getting lit. This guy lit up, all right? So let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll link it. I think I got it for about $14 on Amazon. So if you wanna get your own kit, follow along with my video. It's not the most perfect instructional video, but it does show you that if you're a beginner with only you know two to three times practicing of soldering, that you can do this, guys. It's very achievable, um, really fun. I did it on a Sunday night. I just sat there and I couldn't stop till I was done. Took me about maybe an hour and a half. Probably took me a while because I was also trying to video and whenever I'm videoing, my camera kind of gets in the way where I'm soldering. So if you're not videoing, it'll probably go a little faster, but buy a kit if you want one. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.